Hello everybody, welcome to Some Things Fishy. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. We appreciate your support. And if you're not a subscriber yet, we encourage you to subscribe. Get on the channel, we got some great content. If you're here, here today clicking this video, I reckon that you really like uh, clownfish and you want to learn more about them. I'm going to put a link to a whole playlist of oh, well over a dozen videos that we have that are strictly about clownfish, anemones, and things like that. So it is a fantastic resource for you if you want to learn more about clownfish and find the perfect one for you and for your tank and for your budget. But uh, let's see, today we want to talk about types of clownfish. So it's very similar to a previous video we've made about clownfish compatibility, what types, that video is really good to know about what types of clownfish are good to intermingle with each other and, and how that goes. But today I just want to talk about the types of clownfish and we're going to go into about eight different types of clowns. So I'll put a link to that clownfish compatibility guide. I'll put a link to the clown clownfish playlist. And throughout the video, I'll put links to multiple clownfish videos that we have made uh, so that you can you know, get the best resources that you need. So if you find a clownfish that you're interested in, look in the description, there's probably a link to it and we'll dive into it deeper in those videos. But anyways, let's get to it. Let's talk about eight different types of clownfish what they're like, what their difficulty level is, what their aggression is like, and uh, we'll get into it and, and break it down step by step. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, let's get into it and start off with probably the most common and uh, the, the most desired type of clownfish, and that would be the Ocellaris clownfish. They're also f commonly referred to as common clownfish or the false percula clowns, uh, but the most common name that you'll probably see in stores and things like that is the Ocellaris clown. If you go into any store and ask, hey, do you have any, any Ocellaris clowns here? They will definitely be able to help you out. What I love the most about Ocellaris clowns, and, and, and we'll get into it with other species as well, but they have so many different types of designs and colors and patterns. Because a lot of these Ocellaris clowns are bred in captivity, they've been able to make designer clowns from this breed. And there are some absolutely incredible types of colors. Um, so in fact, we actually have a video about designer clownfish that you can buy. You should check that out as well. There are tons of different types. So just the regular orange type Nemo clownfish is an Ocellaris clown. And you can get those for commonly 12, 15 bucks. Uh, then if you kind of go to the, the black version of that variant, you know, it might go up to maybe 15, 20 bucks. Uh, but with some of these designer Ocellaris clowns, you could be paying anywhere from like 50 to $200 just for the individual clown. Now, keep in mind that these clowns pair really nicely with each other. And uh, you can often save a lot of money if you buy two at a time or maybe three or something like that. So they might, you know, if, you, if you're gonna buy at the very uh, base version, you know, uh, you might be able to get $12 for an individual or $15 for an individual Ocellaris clown and then pay $20 for a, for a pair and, and save a few bucks there. And that'll be the same when you buy the designer types as well. So I hope you like some of the footage we got going in here. We got lots of amazing Ocellaris clowns. They're the species that m myself and my family has had the most experience with over the years. Uh, in terms of care, they are very easy to care for. Very easy. In fact, they're one of the best beginner fish out there. Uh, and and uh, in terms of how they how hardy they are, they're extremely hardy fish. They'll, they'll do just fine. They, they'll be able to take it. So for beginners, they're fantastic. And then for experts as well, like I said, with the designs and the colors, they are fantastic, fantastic fish, no matter what your experience level is. And you can even start experimenting with different types of anemones. I typically have my clowns, my Ocellaris clowns host bubble tip anemones, uh, but there's lots of different types in, that you can get as well. So in terms of size, these will grow to about three to four inches. The female will be the bigger one of the pair. The male will stay a bit smaller. So keep that in mind. Moving on to the next type of clownfish, we're gonna talk about the percula clowns. These are also very common. In fact, they're, they're so similar to Ocellaris clowns that you might even have a percula or have seen percula and you, and you didn't even know it. Uh, they're probably the second, I, I would say one of the, like the second most popular type of clownfish that you can get. Um, 
There are also tons of different designs, different colors. There, there are, a lot of these are also bred in captivity as well. So keep that in mind. Lots of different opportunities to, if you have the budget, spend a lot more money to get a lot cooler of one with different patterns, stripes, and uh, designs on it. Fantastic, fantastic fish as well. Um, you can, one thing to keep in mind, and again, check out that clownfish compatibility guide that, that I made in the past, but Ocellaris clowns and Percula clowns are very similar in, term, in terms of their breed and their DNA and their genetics. So you can often pair these together. Uh, you, you can have more success pairing these two together than, than you probably will trying to pair other different types of clowns, fish species to them. They're, they're very close, very mild mannered. Their aggression is smaller than most of the other types of clowns. So they'll often pair together. Uh, but if you want to really pair two clownfish together, it's, it's best practice to keep it in the same species. So percula with percula, ocellaris with ocellaris. Uh, and we're going to get onto the other ones shortly. But this, these two are one of the breeds where you could, you could get away with potentially interbreeding them and, or inter uh, pairing them and things like that. Price for these is going to be a little bit more expensive than the Ocellaris, just as like the base price for the base design, the base, the the normal Percula clown. Uh, you're going to pay maybe twenty to thirty dollars depending on your store, just just for one of them, and then for two you might be able to save money for getting two at a time. And then again, it can go very very expensive uh, if you want one of the extreme, fantastic designer Percula clowns. In terms of care, they're not quite as easy. Uh, they're not quite as hardy as the Ocellaris clowns, and they're a little bit more expensive, so it's a little bit more of a risk to get these if you're a beginner. But uh, clowns in general, they do pretty well, and, and they do pretty well with other types of fish in your tank. So you, you should be okay, but just know that these are a little less hardy than the Ocellaris clowns. Okay, moving on. Let's, let's talk about the maroon clownfish. In my opinion... The maroon clownfish is the coolest, most beautiful clownfish of the eight different types of clowns that we're going to talk about today. That being said, these are one of the most difficult ones to have. In terms of their care, they're pretty dang easy. They're just as easy, if not easier, than the Ocellaris clownfish. But in terms of their aggression level, it is off the charts. And I've, I've had some people in the comments say, hey, I have a pair of gold striped maroons and, and they're completely fine or I have a white striped maroon and it's fine too. I'm telling you though, from every time that I go into this, my local store, I see dead dead maroons on the bottom of every maroon clownfish tank. They are super aggressive as babies and they don't really lose it. Like some fish will lose their aggression as they mature and find some territory in the tank that's theirs. These ones are known to even be aggressive towards humans. Like when you go to put food in the tank or when you walk up to the tank, they'll they'll kind of get in your face a little bit. So keep that in mind. Their aggression is, I mean, it's they're famously aggressive. Even when they mature, even like especially when they mature, they get more aggressive. And that's towards their own species and towards other species. Like I said, as babies, I see dead ones in the tank because they picked on each other until they die. And I'm even reading here from some of the research I've done today that the maroon clownfish, uh, f like female, when paired with a male, will sometimes even just be in a bad mood and, and, and bite at it and pick on it until it dies when they've been paired for months, if not years. Uh, so keep that in mind. They're gorgeous. The lightning maroon clownfish is absolutely phenomenal. It is so beautiful. And the price actually isn't too bad. You can get away with paying, you know, 20 to $30 for like, well, you know, I've even seen $15 for the white striped maroon at, at my local store. Uh, but when you get the gold stripe maroon and, and the lightning maroon clownfish, you're going to pay somewhere to towards 30 to maybe even $50 for one of those fish. And then, you know, save some money getting a pair. I'd always recommend that if you have the budget for it. Uh, but yeah, maroon clownfish. I have a whole series of videos on maroon clowns that you can check out. I'll try and put those here, uh, link them somewhere so you can kind of get to know them a bit. They're fantastic. But and and keep in mind, they're also the biggest, the largest type of of clownfish there are they can get up to seven inches long the like i said the ocellaris they'll get three to four inches the percula will get you know, a little bit smaller maybe three inches fully grown the maroon clownfish the female when paired will get to up to seven inches and the and the male will stay smaller so fantastic clown but hyper aggressive okay moving on to the cinnamon clownfish these are ones uh, that I don't have as much experience with. I've never personally owned one, but I did do some research on it to give you guys 
uh, just a heads up of what these are like. And a lot of the, a few of the other types of clownfish as well, I haven't specifically owned in my tank, but I did do some research on them to give you guys the information that you need if you're thinking about buying these. Okay, so the cinnamon clownfish, also known as fire clownfish, not as big as the maroon, but pretty large. They reach, they can reach up to five inches and they're semi-aggressive. So don't think that they're going to be quite as bad as the maroon clownfish, but they're not also going to be quite as calm as maybe the percula. And, and also in terms of their uh, aggression, they'll often be more aggressive towards clownfish. So they shouldn't be kept in, in more of the groups. They're better in just pairs or single. They're not quite as aggressive towards other types. So other types of fish in your tank. Price, it can be relatively cheap, 15 to $20 for one. I'm not super sure what the different types of designs and variants are of these, but yeah, they're, they're not too bad. Let's move on to the tomato clownfish. Uh, similar to the cinnamon, they're, they're very, very similar in terms of their look. Their color is a bit different though. Uh, this is one of the most inexpensive types of clownfish. You can get these for 15 to 20 bucks, and they're also very, very easy, just like the cinnamon clownfish, very easy to have in your tank, very hardy fish. And uh, again, it's very similar in size. They can grow up to five inches long. They also do really well with trigger fish, tangs, damsel fish, angel fish in the tank. So they'll do better with some of those bigger bigger ones. Uh, the thing though with these tomato clownfish is that they're found almost exclusively with bubble tip anemones. So it's going to be much harder for you to try and get them to host a different type of an enemy. Really you got to stick to the bubble tip anemones. And stay tuned to the end. I'll kind of give a brief overview of anemones. But um, yeah, let's let's move on. So the tomato clownfish, the Clarky clownfish, uh, also kind of has a similar, more of the body shape of the cinnamon and the tomato clown. Um, but they're a little bit different. Their size, they're a bit bigger. They can get up to six inches. Price, they're 10 to $15. Uh, they're pretty dang easy to host anemones with. That You can pretty much get them with any, any, any anemone species and get them to host that pretty easily. And their care, uh, also very easy. So like I said, these are kind of the second largest. They're on the larger side of, of the clownfish, but they aren't nearly as aggressive as maroons or any of the tomato type of clownfish. Those are definitely the more aggressive types of the types of clownfish. So they should be better found in your in your tank. It, they won't be quite as, you won't have to worry about them quite as much. They're inexpensive hardy, not too, not too aggressive. They're excellent clownfish for your saltwater fish tank. I'd really recommend them. And let's go on to like the skunk species of clownfish. We're talking about the pink skunk more specifically here, but the skunk in general is another type of clownfish that's on the market. Uh, they are usually, their pattern is quite different. They kind of have this white stripe on their face, kind of on where their uh, ear would be if they were human. <laughs> uh, they're not quite as common as some of these other types of clownfish that we've talked about today. Uh, they they kind of stick to their anemone a little bit more. They're, they really rely on an, on an anemone more than a lot of these other types of clownfish. So the other types of clownfish that we've talked about today, they, they don't have to have an, an anemone, although they would really enjoy having one. This The skunk type, especially the pink skunk, they almost have to have one. It's, they're very, very dependent on that anemone. And they are very, they're probably the most difficult type of clownfish because they uh, can be easily picked on and they can fall, they can get sick and die just because of stress. So that anemone really helps them cope with that stress and helps them, helps their survivability a little bit more. They're on the smaller side, two to three inches, and their price can generally is around 20 to $25 for an individual one. Saddleback clownfish, they have a very distinct pattern. It almost looks like they have a saddle on their back hence the name. They grow up to four to five inches, and the interesting thing is the male doesn't really get smaller than the female. They, they both kind of stay the same size in their pairs, so that's one interesting thing about the saddleback clowns. Um, in terms of care, pretty dang easy, like most clownfish, besides the skunk that we just talked about. Uh, price, 15 to 25 bucks. Size, four to five inches, and again, the male and female will both stay around that same size. So keep that in mind. They are uh, another interesting choice when you're looking to get the best clownfish for your tank. 
So I think that covers most of what we were talking about. I hope you've enjoyed the footage and I hope you've, been, you've enjoyed the information during this video. Again, check out our clownfish pit playlist. We have well over a dozen videos just about clownfish, anemones, things like that. So uh, keep in mind that uh, a lot of like bubble tip anemones are great for most of these type types of clownfish. They'll, they'll do just fine. The ocellaris don't naturally host bubble tip anemones. So it might take a little bit more work. And that's just kind of how it goes. For most of these clownfish, maybe genetically and, and naturally in, in their habit, natural habitats, they don't host these anemones. But if you kind of give it some time, we have a whole video on bubble tip anemones and how to get your clowns to host them. And a whole video on like, hey, is your clownfish not hosting your anemones? No problem, try these steps. So check out some of our other videos and you should be just fine. We hope you've enjoyed the video. We hope you enjoyed our channel, Some Things Fishy. Be sure to subscribe, like this video and comment below what you think and what your favorite type of clownfish is that we talked about. Which ones do you have? We'd love to hear about it. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of your day.